it's uh, 1147. We have at least 15 minutes uh, for us to, to, to finish, which is not enough, I know very well. But we just want to summarize what we are learning. So I want you just to pay attention to the front. You don't have to come from where you are. You remain in your group. You can remain sitting there. Um, a mic is going to come to where you are and you just summarize. So I'll start with group one. Group one is Sister Odette's group. They read from Matthew 24, from verse 1 to 25. I just read the scripture as you listen. Then they answer the the questions. So Jesus tells about the future. What we are learning today is the end times. We want to know the signs of the end times. We want to be a church that is prepared. If you go to the seven churches that are in Revelations, you hear that some churches they think that they are alive but they are dead. We don't want to be a dead church. We want to be ready for the coming of Christ. For surely Christ is going to come. So I'm going to read it. Jesus himself telling about the end times. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came up and showed him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left there upon one another. That shall, be, that shall not be thrown down. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of, the, of your coming and of the end of the age? For, and Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. And you will hear of the wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled at all. These things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations will raise up against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. All of these are the beginnings of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then men will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because of lawlessness will abound, the law, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations then the end will come. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, whoever is, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the rooftop not go down to take anything out of his house. Let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be great tribulation. For then there will be great tribulation. Such as it has not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or there, do not believe it. For false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I've told you, before end. The word of the Lord. So group one, read your questions and tell us what you have found out. Praise God. Amen. Um, we have six questions here. 
The first question is, um, what are the signs of the end of the age? And then we established nine signs um, according to the Bible in Matthew 24, four, verse 4 to 14. The first one is um, impersonation of Christ. And then according to the Bible, that it says some will come to you and say, I'm the Christ. So once um, prophets, false prophets, comes to you and take up the role of Christ, which um, primarily is savior, salvation. Once people offer you salvation outside of Christ, it is the first sign of the end of times. The second one is wars and rumors of war. Just as we're having in today, um, nations going against nations, North Korea firing missiles to South Korea. Those are signs of the end of times. The third one is um, nation against nation. Syria against um, ISIS and all these things. But you know, I'm just trying to give the practical examples. Nation against nation. The fourth one is famine and pestilence and earthquakes in various places, which you know we are we are actually having right now in the world. The fifth one is hatred and tri tribulation. The sixth one is betrayal. The seventh one is um, deceit by many false prophets. Once um, false prophecy comes on, comes up, and then deceives a lot of people. And the eighth one is lawlessness and um, lack of love. And then the love of Christ will also um, go cold. The last one is that the gospel of the kingdom will reach the ends of earth. So it means every, the whole world will hear about the um, gospel of Christ. The second question is on... It says, what the first sign is deception. How is deception happening in today's world? And then somebody said that um, the fact that most people, uh, not really, but some preachers today, they are more motivated by the profits from which they gain from the altar. So the fact that uh, most preachers perform fake miracles and then they also use the name of God just to make money is an example of uh, the kind of deception that is happening in today's world. And then also, the said um, diluted gospel. When uh, preachers abuse the um, gospel of prosperity, you know, we wouldn't say the gospel of prosperity is a bad thing because, you know, the Bible says that I wish above every other thing that you that you prosper, even as your soul prospers. But once you begin to tilt it to only material prosperity and leave soul prosperity alone, you know, you are diluting the gospel. And that is another sign of deception which is happening in today's world. The third one is, what is the abomination of desolation? Um, we read Daniel 11, 31, and Daniel 12, 11, we talked about um, abomination of desolation. And then we also um, found out that in, um, in the olden days, so to say, the, Roman, um, the Romans usually go to, into the uh, temple of the Jews and then they defile it with their own gods, Jupiters and all that. So you, desolation, abomination of desolation is... Um, it simply means contamination of the temple, defiling the temple, and then you know casting aside everything that is of Christ, ca casting aside everything that is holy, and then making the temple desolate, making the altar desolate. Um, this next question is comment on verse twenty about Sabbath. Why mentioned? And then the verse says that pray that your flights will not be in winter or Sabbath. And we said that, you know, the understanding of winter and Sabbath in that verse is that winter and Sabbath means, you know, a time which is not favorable to travel. 
winter because of the weather is bad and Sabbath because of the laws of the Jews that says that in, that limits the movement so bringing it to uh, modern day is that we should pray and then we should always ensure that everything we do there is um, we pray that it's in sync with you know what the Bible has spoken about in order to um, enter into the kingdom then the next question is who are the elect we said that elect is simply the saved and then the last question is on um, reflecting and commenting on our reading and one thing we all you know concluded on was that we are in the end times thank you Brother, that's scared. Are we in the end times? That's scared. <laughs> I'm going to group four. Group four read Revelation 13 from verse 11 to 18, which I read in the beginning, the issue of the 666, right? That was group four. In the other verse uh, was um, Matthew 25 from verse 1 to 13, the story of the virgins, five with oil, five without oil. Let me read quickly. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took the lambs and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took the lamb and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in the vessels with the lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they were they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins come also, saying, Lord, Lord, open for us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Revelations, we've read it already. So this group, uh, can you read your questions and your answer? Yeah, I'm going to read um, for this. I'm going to represent this group four. And the first question that we had uh, was, what does Revelation teach us about the end time? And the response is, a lot of changes that are, are happening. And that will cause us to turn away from the word of God. So that is what um, we got. And if you look at um, what is going on now, there are a lot of things which are going on um, We can make us turn away from God. And one thing that one of our group members said is about the media. So if the media, you know, um, advertises uh, for, the media advertise for some of these things, I mean, it will just catch attention of the people and people will just follow it because it is from some of the media, which is CNN, and I don't want to mention the news, but that's what we had. And the second question is, um, who is the beast of the earth? And the answer is the devil. Okay. And the next question, which is number three, after listening from the video of the chip and reading Revelation, do you think this technological breakthrough is a slow initiation of the mark to the word or is it is a very positive piece of new to new to rejoice it's supposed to be news to rejoice yeah on. news <laughs> yeah to rejoice yeah, okay now from this uh, from the video that we watch uh, the group is said that this is a slow initiation uh, to what the bible is talking about it is not any new technology that um, we should embrace 
because gradually we are getting into what the Bible is talking about. But it must start from somewhere, and this is the initial stage that we have. And question four is, what did Jesus teach about the final judgment? And for this one, um, from what we read, it's going to be tough and it's going to be difficult for Christians because uh, they said that if you don't have the chip, you cannot buy or you cannot sell. So Christ is telling us that um, the final time is going to be, it's not going to be easy for everyone. It's going to be tough, especially for the Christians because we are the target uh, group. And the fifth question is, are you ready as a group for this day? And there was silence. <laughs> no, nobody was bold enough to say, I'm ready when Jesus comes. Especially when you read the Matthew um, chapter 25, verse 1 to 13. So people, I'm from what I, I think, I'm, I think I'm, right now I'm going to decide for the group. No, it's your silence, but um, I think um, we are getting there. We are, we are getting there. We are preparing, but we are not yet ready. But we are in the process of doing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy, but. <laughs> Can everybody look at this group? They are preparing. They are not yet there. <laughs> okay. Then the last question reflect and comment on your readings. Huh. This one. Um, we look at there are a lot of things that were said, but I'm going to just say some of them. We look at the signs of um, the end time. If you look at the wars and false prophets, and also wonders being performed, and there are people who are also claiming that um, they are Jesus. So from this, we can say that um, if you look at um, the system, the technology that we have now. People use tracking systems, they track your phone, they track your devices, and we advise that you should be careful with some of the things that you see on phones, especially when it comes to immigration issues. So these are some of the comments that we made, that we should be very careful with, because everything we're going to say is being tracked by other people. And also, um, there are also some free stuff on the internet that you are signed, you sign up for, and you may think that you are getting things but sometimes they take your information and you don't know what they are going to do with your information. And Bernabas mentioned one key technology which is DNA. Um, if you send a blood sample and they take your DNA, they are also going to uh, know your DNA and they can send it like a different virus or bacteria or an agent which can cause a disease to you. So that, these are some of the comments that you made. And the final, um, let me make sure I have every word here. I've, I've mentioned the media, the word the media will pray in this. And the final question that we had, which is not, which came from the group, that are you convinced that this is the chip that we talk about? And with this, can I say there was also silence? <laughs> yeah, we are not, people are not convinced that this is the chip, but uh, we suggested that uh, before we as a Christian, uh, we know more about this. We have to be convinced that this is the chip that the Bible is talking about. This is going to be the sentences. And another important thing is that it's not just for us. We must also teach other people or convince other people to know that this is what the sex is or the chip and they should not go for it. But I mean, I can't say <laughs> like the group, I mean, we don't know yet whether this is a true chip that the Bible is talking about. Because there was no, nobody was able to give a bold answer that yes. Everybody was like, we are just so we are still thinking, let me put it that way. <laughs> we are still thinking about it. But they, they, what they said was that um, I mean it is an initial process that this is getting there. It's something that they have started and it's going to get bigger and bigger and finally probably. And the last question that was put to us by the group leader was that um, how are you going to cope with this and with this i suggested that um, you can go back to africa because there are, 
where there's no going to be this technology there. So if you think that it would be good. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so that, 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 uh, Did you hear the noise? Everybody's <laughs> like, where are you going to go? I'm not going to go back. But that's true. I mean, <laughs> there are places that they don't have. These two projects don't get affected anymore. So they're just going to stay there and worship the Lord. So you will be happy. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> You know, um, it's something just for, for reflection, something for thinking. If we have, um, I, myself, I believe that technology is going to take us there. That, that, that's my belief. Technology is going to take us there. And I'm not saying this is it, but I'm saying this may be preliminary to what is yet to come. Say you work for this company, and they say it's voluntary in the beginning, right? Police changes. Police is made by men and changed by men. Next year, they say, anyone without a chip, you cannot work at this company. That's not persecution of Christians. So you leave that company, and you go to another company. Then all the companies are going to have this. The government system is going to have this. So with all your degrees that you have, can you just stay home and not work? Or can you go and get the chip for you to work? You, you see where we are going. So when the Bible talks about the tribulation that is yet to come, it gives you a glimpse of the, how this tribulation can come. It can come this way. Then it will move now to say that chip is going to contain all your health records, DNA, everything, right? This very chip is going to have your passport your travel, records and everything. This chip is going to also have your money. Because already they are talking of facing money. I think you've been hearing the discussions that, you know, money is very inconvenient and blah, blah, blah. So all your money has to be inside the chip. In that way now, when you are going to travel to go back to, to, to Ghana, you, you just swipe and they can tell how healthy you are or your health records, your, your passport, where have you you've been, everything like that. Or else, you can refuse. When you refuse, you can't travel, you can't buy, you can't sell, you can't do anything because there won't be any money then. Money will be just transferred electronically. Like now we wire money, right? Th this is how it's going to be. It just gives you a glimpse of how it's going to be. And what we read mainly from Matthew, there were red letters. These are the letters that, the words that Jesus said. So I just want you to have some time to reflect. I got a, a DVD which shows the 666. I think we may have that at home. Probably sometime before the semester starts, we may just have a video night where we can just gather here and watch it. It was unnerving. I started to ask myself as a question, if my workplace told me today that without a chip you cannot work, what do I need to do? And if every workplace does, does that, the worst is technological. What are we going to do? Probably we'll go with Brother Kusi's suggestion. <laughs> Back to, Mac, to, to, to Kumasi, and Abuja, and Arare, and Lusaka. <laughs> I don't know. Then, of course, all the banks over there, also like, like in Zimbabwe, they are wired. Everything is wired. wired. So the banks also are going to have the same system. Because banks are run by mostly the same people. So something to really think and reflect. My apology, the time is gone. So you two groups, we are not going to, to finish uh, for now because I don't want to let you lose light. So I'm going to give Pastor Emma to take over from here. Then we'll see next week whether we can finish up or whatever the Holy Spirit will tell us to do next week. So Pastor Emma. May you take up.